Physics, May 2016, question eight. The graph shows how the velocity v of an object moving in a straight line varies with time t from zero to t. Which graph represents the displacement s of the object in time t is equal to zero to t? So the question is that they have given a vt graph, velocity is a vector quantity, which has both magnitude as well as direction. For this graph, we need to find a displacement time graph. So let's consider the uh, question. The question says that the object is moving in a straight line. So initially it's starting with velocity zero. So let's take this as velocity zero at time t is equal to zero. Then slowly, slowly the velocity increases up to this level and then it increase, it decreases to zero. So it increases and then from somewhere it, it decreases to zero. So this happens at t is equal to t by two. Here, it decreases to zero exactly half of this time. Now the velocity time graph shows a negative axis, which means the object now is moving in the opposite direction. So now it's going to move in this direction. Again, the velocity increases in the opposite direction and then decreases to zero. As you can see the area while it traveled on the positive side and the area that it traveled on the negative side is same, we can consider that the displacement, the distance it traveled to reach here is exactly same as the distance it traveled to reach here. That means we can conclude that the object came back to its initial point. This will be at T. The area of the VT graph display uh, uh, represents the displacement. So we know that at exactly T is equal to half, the displacement is maximum because it has gone to a maximum distance, which is the greatest displacement and return back to its previous position where the displacement will be zero. Now just split this, all the, question, all the options where your time c is t by four, t by two, sorry. So this is the half of t. And we know that at half of t, the displacement is maximum because it has traveled on a straight line before it returns back to its previous position. So the displacement is maximum at t by two. You can see in this option, this option, and this option, the displacement is zero, which means they are not the answer. Let's see the A option. They have increased to a maximum displacement, and then it, it reduced to displacement zero, which means it had reached to its initial starting point. It has gone from here, then from here, it turned back and came back to its initial point. Therefore, the answer for this question is A. Question nine. A ball falls vertically onto horizontal ground and rebounds as shown. The ball has momentum P1 downwards just before hitting the ground. After rebounding, the ball leaves the ground with the momentum P2 upwards. The ball is in contact with the ground for 0 0.020 second. During this time interval, an average resultant force of 25 Newton acts on the ball. What is the possible combination of values for P1 and P2? Let's ask, consider the momentum upward as positive momentum downwards as negative. When it falls down, it moves with the momentum P1, that's the initial momentum. 
before it collides with the ground, then it bounds with the momentum of P2. So in this case, we can assume that the initial momentum will be greater than the final momentum. And we know that it's moving downwards, so the initial momentum is minus P1. The, fi uh, the final momentum is P2. So if I have to find the change in momentum, change in momentum, it's going to be the final momentum, which is P2 minus of initial momentum, which is minus P1. which gives me an answer of P1 plus P2. I've written it clearly here. And according to the Newton's second law, we know that force is equal to rate of change in momentum. Now that we have known that the change in momentum is P2 plus P1, if we have to find the possible combination we need to know the change in momentum's value. And we know that change in momentum can be found as product of force into time, which is the impulse. So the force is given as 25 Newton. The time is given as 0 0.020 seconds. So our change in momentum is 0 0.50 Newton meter. Now we have to choose which option would give a value where initial momentum is greater than final momentum. Sorry about that, this should be momentum. Okay, so let's check our answer. Option A, the momentum, the first momentum is smaller than the second momentum, so that's not the answer. Second is also the same, the first momentum, initial momentum is less than the second momentum, so that's not the answer. The third option, the momentum P1 is greater than P2, this could be an answer. Option D, you can see the momentum of P1 is greater than the second momentum, so this could be an answer. But when you add both of the values, you should get 0 0.50. So when you add 0 0.30 plus 0 0.20, you get 0 0.50. But when you add 0 0.60 plus 0 0.15, you do not get 0 0.50. As a result, D is not the answer. The answer is option C. Question 10. A sphere falls from rest through the air. The graph shows the variation with time of sphere's velocity. Which diagram shows the force acting on the sphere when it is at the velocity corresponding to the point P on the graph? Notice that there's a sphere that is falling through air. So here we are not considering air resistance is negligible. We consider the air resistance in this case. At first, when it falls, at the instant when t is equal to zero, air resistance is also zero. So we have a resultant force of the weight, which means our acceleration is equal to g. So which means only weight is there, which represents this graph. But this is P is not at time t is equal to zero. So this is not the option. Now what happens when time increases? When t increases, the air resistance start to increase. So resultant force decreases. The resultant force decreases, but what will be the answer? What will be the resultant force? Weight will be greater than air resistance. And when weight is equal to air resistance, we get terminal velocity, which means the acceleration is zero. When acceleration is zero, the velocity will be a constant value. 
This in this case, P is not at a constant velocity, which means acceleration is not zero, which means weight is not equal to air resistance. So you can see here weight is equal to air resistance. This option is suitable if the point P is situated on a constant velocity. So this is not the answer. You can observe this one. Option D, air resistance seems to be greater than the weight. So instead of the object falling down, it will move upwards. This never happens. So this is not the answer. P is situated before reaching the terminal velocity, which means weight is greater, whereas the air resistance is smaller. So for this question, the answer is C. If you like this video, please subscribe, press the bell button uh, to get notified with new videos.